My only gripe with Mob Psycho 100 Season 1 is that it didn't focus on what I thought was its main strength. So imagine my delight when the first three episodes of Season 2 tell me that this aspect will now be the focus. I'd like to thank my Discord moderator, Toke55, as well as Alex Nguyen, Emma MP4, and Sage Panic for suggesting Mob Psycho 100 Season 2 for Red Hot Go. If there is another show you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. The first few scenes seem to re-establish the dynamic between Mob and Reagan. I still don't like how little Reagan pays Mob for his assistance, but I haven't forgotten the genuinely beautiful scenes that took place between them at the end of Season 1. We then get a sequence wherein Mob tries out for student council president and freezes on stage, making it clear that he has a lot of social growth to do. While Season 1 was concerned with Mob and his development, it was seemingly more interested in exploring his relationships with specific characters. This sequence suggests that the primary focus for Season 2 will be Mob himself, which would be great. The brief subplot after this is one that I had mixed feelings about initially, but eventually grew to appreciate. I was as surprised as the side characters when Mob got himself a girlfriend. I thought it was adorable how she opened up to him, and how happy he seemed to be with her. After reading a manuscript for a book she was writing, we learned that not only did he turn her down, but that she had only asked him out on a dare, as a joke amongst her friends. This scene made my blood boil. As someone who has had close friends fall victim to this prank, and someone who was an intended target, I can tell you firsthand that this is a nasty thing to do. The people partaking in this practice believe that the butt of the joke is the friend that gets caught up in it. Ha ha, how embarrassing for you, this weird person thinks you like them. But the actual butt of the joke, the one who actually gets hurt, is the outsider they involve in the scheme. When the real victim realises they've been deceived, they feel as though they are so undesirable as a partner that someone would be embarrassed by the mere idea. It's one of the nastiest tricks you can pull on someone, and it made me sour to this girl immediately. I lightened up on the story when I saw Mob's response. After learning of this nasty joke, he still stands up for her, picks up the pieces of the torn up manuscript, and when the girl who wrote it laments that it's gone, he uses his psychic powers to mend it in front of her, confessing that he is an esper. This scene is delightful, and it made me love Mob even more. Another part of this scene that I love is that Mob's original crush witnessed the whole thing and commented on how smooth it was with a smile on her face. Maybe it's because she looks like Ami from Toradora or Kokomi from Saki K, but the fact that she wasn't jealous over this stood out to me. The girl who turned you down becoming jealous thing is a very sexist trope, so I'm glad to see Mob Psycho 100 discarded. Honestly, I could have called my rating for this season right here. The first episode was absolutely brilliant, but of course there were two episodes to go, and while they don't get better per se, they have their unique offerings to the experience. When it comes to Mob's development, the second episode only contributes a joke about Mob defeating a monster because he's too socially inept to be afraid of it. But it also gives some insight into the psychic industry. The new psychic we meet runs a business very much like Reagan's, except he actually has powers, and even runs his business better. The third episode is when we go from character setup and world building to something genuinely thought provoking. It starts with Mob's friends intervening when someone tries to mug him, and his body improvement club friends tell him that he needs to be willing to protect himself. This exchange introduces the question of what is and isn't a justification for violence. This idea gets explored further when Mob and Reagan are hired to exercise a family of ghosts, and the ghosts ask for mercy. This scene was genuinely tense. Dimple tries to trick the father ghost into attacking Mob to make his decision more straightforward, but it insists on remaining peaceful. Mob is genuinely torn over this, but eventually Reagan steps in and calls off the exorcism. Mob ends this episode questioning if anyone could stop him if he were to turn evil, if he decided that spirits had more claim to this world than humans did. If he lost the line between justified violence for the sake of self-defense and violence for the sake of self-interest. 
These are some genuinely thought provoking ideas and I hope that the rest of season 2 builds on them. So yeah, Mob Psycho 100 season 2 has everything I loved about season 1 and some things that I thought were missing. So it is without hesitation that from ice cold to red hot I give Mob Psycho 100 season 2 a rating of red hot. I dare say I'll be finishing this show by year's end. And that is all for this episode of Red Hot Go. I'd like to thank my patrons, Orion Tran, Lars Espen, Data52, Jaman5, Lemon Shark, Pix Calibar, Alberto Cruz, Tyler Bennett, Tenka, Jeremy Pashik, Fireclaw, and Soren. If you would like to support the channel further, consider becoming a patron yourself. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next time.